letting panic creep in and affect their play. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And oh, a cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Here's Wilson, flushed out right, and now he's going to use his legs. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. You know, I don't think this is the last time we'll see that in this game. This guy has mobility, and they want to use his legs in the game plan, so there will be designed runs as well as his scrambles. Now they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea. Slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. They finds his man, the tight end Olsen. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. They run it with Carson. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They go for it on fourth down, and it pays off big time as they pick up 29.
So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf. That'll bring up second down. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we have a guy who made the catch. They try to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now it's Carson. Just a couple yards there down to the 17. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Eighth play in this opening drive coming up. This is third down. stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Anthony McFarland, his first carry of the ball game. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. 
but they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. On second down, here's Penny. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. God, it's Wilson. Left side complete to lock it. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. From the gun again to Penny. And he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 18-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Flush to his right, and he will score! Touchdown, Seattle! An 18-yard touchdown grab, as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker, sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back, but when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Here's second and seven now from the 28. And he'll get maybe a couple before he's taken down as that will take us to the two-minute warning. Coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked. First down. Now a timeout called for by the defense, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Second down. 
This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. They'll run with Snell. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. On first down, it's Snell again. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. as they come up first and goal. Tossing this out wide to McFarland. And the Steelers are going to have it first and goal as he'll take this down to about the three. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Boswell's kick is good. So a late three there, that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. Pulls it in at the 13. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. On second down, Connor looking for space. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. 
There's Roethlisberger. Ebron's got it. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. On first and 10 is Connor. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Roethlisberger setting up the screen. This is Samuels. He's got the first down inside the 10. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard game. his own space who can break tackles and in a sense become his own blocker we don't have that guy in the game right now second and goal and they will try again from the two-yard line they'll try to run it this is Connor and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage officially it will go as a one-yard loss and that's going to lead to a third down this has not been a fun sequence for him at all first and goal no gain second and goal he ends up losing yardage he may be trying to talk him into getting the ball third time but it's going to be difficult for him to win that battle they'll try and set up the screen it's complete and he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown from three yards out and the Steelers have taken the lead getting your back involved What's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. That oftentimes makes people miss. It's that run after the catch, and off he goes. Into the end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. <laughs> It's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. offense their defense has done the job now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten Wilson after the play fake to Carson out to the right he gets it to lock it and he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down that one goes for 30 yards from the shotgun Wilson it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot. Went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Throwing again. Wilson. That one going to be complete to David Moore. Five yards. Now it's third and five. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going 
work through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open. That makes things tough. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. Stephon Tillett able to shake free and get home for the sack. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. 31 yards on the punt there. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the simple, guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. Second down, it's Snell. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Running with McFarland. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. On second down, this is Edmonds. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards, the pickup, first down. But they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. They'll go with Snell here on first down. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Here's second and nine. Here's Snell yet again. And hard running is going to get him over the 40 to the 42. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Try to run for it with Snell. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. Barry on to punt a 
as he gets this one away. Now it's Lockett. A good return there, 17 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran with a pick.